Yo, oh my goodness, we have got an absolutely jam-packed episode uh, portfolio update for you today. It's going to be a therapy session. It's going to be extremely therapeutic and each of you is going to help me through this period. We're going to get into my portfolio, what's been happening this week and some positive news for you dividend lovers as well. So grab some chamomile tea and let's get into this. I always say that, you know what, I'm not really going to do portfolio updates on a weekly basis. I'm going to do it every time something significant happens. But it seems like for the past few weeks, something significant has been happening every single week. So you know what? It has been weekly for the past few weeks. You guys seem to enjoy it. So I'm going to continue this on a weekly basis. And at the end of the week, whether big or small, just wrap up what's been going on in the market and in my portfolio. This week has definitely, definitely been big. I wonder if some of you guys have heard of the concept, a shit sandwich where you give someone bad news. So you've got to deliver good news first, then some bad news, and then good news again. Today, I'm gonna to give you a shit sandwich. So, please like the video, please comment with your thoughts, feelings, your views, and please subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm on a mission to get to two and a half thousand subscribers and get the world of investing out to more people in a simpler, clearer, and transparent way. But let's get into it. Good news. First, we are gonna go and talk about sentiment now sentiment has gone from strength to strength as you can can see as you can can see as you can can see because it's been dancing as you can see um from this graph here it's been on the rise it's been my best performance stock to date currently um and here you can see there's a capital gain of 28 percent 28.06 percent 200 pounds capital gain which has been the largest capital gain i've ever ever seen um with a particular stock it actually now due to the turbulence in the market accounts for 40 percent of my overall portfolio capital gains um i've got a video on terms of how much you allocate to a stock and how much your return on investment so sentiment is just an absolute flyer right now and um, I've talked about the reasons. So we all know the reasons that because the market has seen some very, very turbulent times, people are hedging towards gold. Sentiment being a gold miner um, has benefited from that halo effect, but it also does have a great balance sheet as well. So sentiment, which, you know, many moons ago, as you can maybe see from this yearly graph, was one of my worst stocks for a few months um, and in my video beating the market I talk about you know all graphs go up and down and never to sort of you know be too too worried you can see right now it's kind of near the high point I don't know if this graph is telling me what it needs to be telling me but you can kind of see illustrated here that it was nestling at the bottom for a very long time people were selling off um, and now it's you know it's done phenomenally well so I'm glad to have held out during that turbulent uh, period so yeah sentiment has been a very very good um, stock for me at the moment sitting at £1.30 a share. The next good performer is Vodafone. Now Vodafone as you know um, I purchased a few months back just because of the 5G but as I mentioned in the last portfolio update their Tabaco spin-off um, has still rippled well. I'm up 3.45% since my last round of investing. So just for those of you guys that are new, um, I always talk about the percentages in terms of the last round I invest because I work on a dollar cost averaging basis, which basically means the stocks that um, fall the most, I try and add more to the stocks that fall the least, I might add less to depending on anything else that's sort of happening in the news. So my last round was on the 17th of July. However, I did do an interim round on the 29th of July with some stocks, not all stocks. So I will let you know if that is the case. But Vodafone has been doing uh, really, really well um, since that that announcement. Um, and obviously, it's just it's yeah, it's, it's nestling at one pound fifty a share at the moment. And as you can see, my capital gain is about ninety five pounds, uh, with my average share price being one pound thirty five. So I'm really happy with the Vodafone performance. Uh, and it wasn't that long ago that Vodafone and Centibin were my two worst stocks. So that's really very interesting to see. What has never been my worst stock is First Solar. First Solar, as you can see, has had quite a volatile month this month. Um, but overall, um, you will see that the trend line is is very, very consistent. It's been great. It's up 2.45% since my interim round, which was the 29th of July, as I just mentioned. Um, 
But overall, it's been consistently positive. So I'm really, really proud with the performance of First Solar. It was one of those stocks that, you know, I, I never had heard of it before. I just done my research, gave it, you know, its own fair chance against any other stock. There was no brand loyalty, no affinity. I've never used them. I've never, never knew about the, the company. I just researched all of the US stocks when US stocks hit the free trade platform. And from a fundamentals only standpoint, First Solar seemed to tick boxes. Um, and it's proved. So, you know, I'm really, really an advocate for looking at the fundamental information of a business. And First Solar has been a great, great example of that. Now, that's the first layer of bread in the shit sandwich. Now, time for the shit in the shit sandwich. I've lost £753 in the last couple of days. You guys will see that from the title anyway. But honestly, it has... Um, it's, 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 it's wounded me a little bit, it's wounded me. I think it's actually a little bit more, but there's a few things I do need to check. So the what I can guarantee is definitely 753 pounds. That I can 100% guarantee. Now, why have I lost so much in the last couple of days? Well, first of all, earnings report. So I did an interim round, as I mentioned, on the 29th of July. And the reason why I did the interim round is because I read a few analyst reports, um, some forecasts, um, some news articles, which suggested that some of the stocks that I hold is going to deliver a good earnings performance and they expect it to deliver a good earnings performance. So I expected that if I bought after the earnings update, what would happen is that I'll be buying at a higher price. So I thought getting before, and then obviously if the earnings comes good, then the stocks will start to rise and I'll benefit from that. Boy, was that a mistake. And I love to be transparent about my mistakes. It's not here, I'm not here just to talk about, you know, when things go well, it's all about learning from your mistakes. So um, my mistake here is just knowing that analyst reports really mean nothing when it comes to earnings. I guess nobody really knows the true earnings of a company except the company itself. Now, analyst reports can be good for the general sentiment of a stock, absolutely, but not when it pertains to earnings specifically. Um, otherwise, you know, they might have known from an insider, which is insider trading. And, you know, so I think I will definitely not look at analyst reports when it pertains to earnings, but I will still to continue to look at an analyst stocks when it pertains to just, is it a good stock um, worth buying? Um, pretty much all of my stocks didn't really do so well. The biggest one at the moment is CYBG. CYBG, as you can see from this graph, um, for me, it fell 20%. Um, this week, 20% in the hole, which has just been absolutely significant. So the reason why CYBG fell so significantly is because of their net interest margins. So a net interest margin is basically what it makes from borrowers, aka the interest that they, that they put onto the loan or credit card or overdraft, versus what it pays to savers, aka the interest rate it gives to people that have bonds, savings bonds, ICEs, general savers accounts, etc. And um, effectively, uh, with CYBG, um, they 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 achieved the lower end of their expectations in terms of net interest margins (NIM). So, because of that, twenty percent bosh, uh, and obviously now I'm sitting at a fourteen percent uh, loss at the moment with CYBG, and that graph is looking, you know, very 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 telling. The second one that was quite major for me is Taylor Wimpy. Now, Taylor Wimpy, um, for me, I lost 10.34%. As you can see, that big drop um, in the Taylor Wimpy graph is quite clear. If I go to the seven day graph, you know, you can see it down. But I like to look at it on a month graph because, you know, it, it really sort of tells the picture. Um, it, it sort of tells the story. Um, so Taylor Wimpy forecast a fall in annual margin. Um, over the year uh, and because they forecast a fall in their expected annual margin you know they've lost 10.34 percent um, so you know that just literally can happen overnight and obviously it has been overnight and that's basically contributed to the the, the drop that I've that I've specifically seen um, from Taylor Wimpy now the FTSE 100 has had its worst day in the last two months um, this week um, it's about 0.8% down um, and one of the biggest contributing factors was Taylor Wimpy's 8.4% drop um, in the last couple of days. So that that just shows you um, how big the Taylor Wimpy, the Taylor Wimpy drop um, has been to the FTSE 100, FTSE 250, to the FTSE uh, overall, um, basically. Now, the third major one to speak of 
is this black horse right here, which is Lloyd's. Now, Lloyd's has just been hemorrhaging money. Um, and for me, you know, Lloyd's has, has fell 10.4%. Um, and actually, you know, it's had a 13% fall in share price recently. Now, because Lloyd's share price is so small, like a 3p movement is like 6% or whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's just because the share price is so small and it's fallen by um, a significant number. So the issue with Lloyd's is that they've had a 550 million pound PPI charge that's hit them this week. Weirdly, it came on earnings week, could have just come a couple of months ago, but whatever. It's come this week or it's been announced this week, shall I say. Um, and so they actually was going to have a pre-tax profit of 3.45 billion um, year to date, which is pretty good. Not pretty good, it's very good. So fundamentally, on the balance sheet wise, they've done well. Um, however, because of this bill, they've landed at 2.9 billion uh, for the year as well. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's massively hit their share price. Now, I think fundamentally Lloyd's is still a good stock. So I'm not too concerned. And I always talk about when a stock is falling, you have to understand whether it's a microeconomic situation, so it's, it's to do with the company itself, or whether it's a macroeconomic, it's to do with the market. And I'm gonna get more into that in later on in this video. But with Lloyd's, as you can see, obviously it's a bit of both. You know, they had this bill because they've been mis-selling, you know, the buggers. But obviously, um, I still think balance sheet wise is good, but however, obviously I'm losing about 150 pounds um, for Lloyd's specifically. Now, to compound all of this stuff, just because, you know, that really wasn't enough this week, Trump decided that he wanted to speak. And I've got videos where I always say that the moment Trump speaks, the markets move. There's an absolute correlation with the time when he opens his mouth to the volume of stock market volatility and i think one of you guys said in the community that we've got uh you know it keeps it exciting i don't want excitement b i don't want excitement so i just want earnings i just want money i don't want excitement but anyway i don't want that type of excitement anyway he said he's going to hit china with an additional 10 percent tariff um and you know, on 300 billion worth of imports, that sent the markets crazy. Pretty much means I went down on everything else from insurance, uh, ETFs, as you can see, you know, the China ETF, the MSCI China ETF um, is down 4.62% as it shows you here. Um, other other stocks, energy, so um, Chevron, um, Facebook, so crude oil went down. I think crude oil was at its lowest. It's been, <coughs> excuse me, at the lowest it's been in a few um, years and so energy's gone down so chevron went down i'm still in the green because i bought at some good prices but literally marginally in the green two pound 72 which is not great when you've invested you know 296 pounds or you know 294 pounds or whatever it is um and yeah pretty much as you can see from here loads of things are in the red now loads and loads of things there was one stage i think last week where i only had two items in the red now like literally there's more than half is in the red definitely which is the case um so overall i'm down four percent it would have been more ha had it not been for the the stupendous performance from sentiment um and from vodafone as well um, so I just want to give those guys, you know, a little pat on the back. Um, and it's just amazing how, yeah, a couple of months back, Sentiment and Vodafone were some of the worst stocks. And it just shows you how the stock market can change. You know, don't get too excited when your stocks are doing amazing. And don't get too saddened when your stocks are doing poorly. Um, because things can flip at the drop of the hat. Uh, and this is just a prime example of that. But if you thought that was enough information, no. In the midst of all of this, the Federal Reserve said that they're going to drop rates by 025 percent to a range of two to two and a half percent which can be a good thing because it will trigger spending however lots of people kept saying that it wasn't necessary the economy was doing well i think there's an article about 150,000 um more jobs have been created in the uk um, sorry in the usa um, we've had an all-time highs we've seen in the s p 500 and so 
was there really a need? And I think there was a lot of pressure from Trump to actually do this in order to increase spending so that he can obviously say that the economy has been boosted. So I think they've kind of caved into that pressure a little bit and they've obviously dropped it. Um, it's, it's, I think it has had an impact on my um, portfolio, but it's really hard to directly correlate um, the performance of my stocks to though that specific announcement. Um, however, I think the general sentiment of this market market this week has been very very downtrodden, um, and so I do think there was an impact from from that standpoint as well. Um, the Bank of England, however, so the UK counterpart um, of the Federal Reserve, uh, has kept the rates the same, which is the smart move. So their rate is at 0.75%. They've not changed it, which I think is great. However, they have cut their growth forecast. Now, it is a forecast, but they don't expect, they've cut their growth forecast to 1.3%, which basically means that they do not expect um, the economy to grow as much as it did before, um, as they planned for it to, to grow before. And they're giving us a one in three chance of us basically slipping into Brexit. Um, not slipping into Brexit, slipping into a recession. Um, and primarily it's due to Brexit. So, you know, that's, that's going to create a lot more turbulence and probably a lot more... Um, uncertainty i would say in the market over the next couple of months as well so you know we will have to see how that plays out now if you thought that was enough no it wasn't enough the pound has also decided that it wants to slip um to its lowest point in the last two years now a pound is worth one dollar 21 i remember the days when a pound was worth two dollars is literally double your money when you if you'd ever travel to america and buy stuff um so it's one dollar twenty one. Might have been a bit higher since the since the time I I sort of recorded that information, um, but it just shows that there is a perception globally that the British economy is getting weaker with a weaker pound, um, and obviously there's a lot more Brexit uncertainty etc that is looming. So Boris Johnson does have a tough job on his hands. You know we're on our second um, prime minister that hasn't been uh, elected by the public. Um, so I, I often sometimes have the train of thought that if you're not elected by the public, you don't, you know, necessarily have the public's interest at heart as much as you may have your own party members that might have voted for you. That's just my own personal view. So I think he's got a lot to do, a lot to prove. But I think, you know, he is preparing more for a no deal Brexit as opposed to, you know, getting a deal. Um, that's just from what I've read. But, you know, at the end of the day, I don't know. I just know what I've been told in the news, really. Um, and all I do know is that it's going to be a very, very turbulent month for UK, for the UK economy, month, months ahead for the UK economy. So, you know, that's just something to sort of bear in mind. But now for the last bit of bread in the shit sandwich, some positive news to kind of leave things on Vodafone. Um, Vodafone paid me a dividend and that dividend was £17.18 so you know you've given me a £95 capital gain but you've also decided to pay me a dividend on Friday which is really really welcome so you know I'm very very appreciative of that. Um, it, I would love to see like a tab here that just shows you all of the dividends you've been paid um, for the stocks that you hold so hopefully with the new free trade investment platform something along those lines um, could be um, incepted and released onto the application but one thing to mention is that I've got eight ex-dividend dates coming up so of my stocks within the next two weeks eight ex-dividend dates um, have been um, forecast six of which have been declared actually and two are still waiting to be declared so the first two are coming on 8th of august um, and they are lloyd's so lloyd's ex-dividend date is on the 8th of august um, this has been declared um, so on the 8th of august any shares that you have by the 8th you will obviously count in the next September payment um, and then also Barclays as well so again any shares that you hold by the 8th for Barclays you will um, get counted in their next September dividend payment and I think the dividend payments for um, Lloyd's and Barclays is respectively the 13th and the 23rd of September the 13th for Lloyd's and the 23rd of September for Barclays as well on the 15th of August, 
the ex-dividend date for Trig. Renewables infrastructure has been set. Um, and so that will be on the 15th of August. Um, and then similarly, uh, Trig's payment date is anticipate is going to be um, on the 30th of September. So the end of uh, next month, so to speak. Um, then on the 16th of August, I've got Chevron. Now Chevron, um, being a US stock, is a quarterly dividend payer anyway. Um, but yes, the Chevron um, X dividend date is on the 16th. If any of you guys, you know, want to know about that, um, and that is going to pay on the 10th of September. And then finally, um, we've got the 22nd of August Imperial Brands. So that's been declared. Um, and obviously, you guys know the Imperial brand share price rose because of their stock buyback. So where it was one of my worst performers, it's now okay but you know last week has been is done not so great purely because i think um, more to do with the tariffs and you know all of the cost of importing and all of the news that we've just kind of mentioned i think uh, has has had an impact but their ex dividend date is on the 22nd of august um and sentiment good old sentiment's ex dividend date is on the 29th of august as well and you know both imperial brands and sentiment will be paying um on some point in September as well. So the only two that I haven't mentioned, I've yet to mention is Aviva. Aviva will have an ex-dividend date that will be at some point in um, August, but it hasn't yet to be declared and also legal in general. So the assurance stocks effectively at some point um, in August will be paying a dividend. So, you know, overall, what that looks like for me is that in September at this current moment, if nothing changes um, in terms of my portfolio, in terms of the amount of money I add to any of these stocks, I'll be expecting £82 in the month of September in dividend payments, um, which is awesome. Um, and I may add to it, I may not, because I've just done this interim round, um, you know, I timed it poorly, I timed it very, very poorly, so, you know, typically I wouldn't kind of then go and do another interim round, I think that would be a little bit overkill um, to get those um get those shares in but I might I might do something I, I will I will review it on a case-by-case -case basis but to be honest I'm probably not going to do a whole round I might just pick a stock and put a bit more into one stock and you know I might play it like that I'll just depend on how I feel during the course um, of the weeks and see you know see what I'm going to do um, from from that standpoint um, but yeah I mean it's good to see that I've got four free shares pending anyway so that is going to be a nice bandage to the wound of you know uh, what's been happening in the market this week but yeah that's a good portfolio update for this week you can see from this graph you know last month you can see up just where it says 7d um, when I invested that time you can kind of see that the the graph rose so you know it did well from the time I invested and then just above where it says 1m you can see where I invested that time the graph has just continued to fall um, obviously hopefully we'll have some some more um, interactive and 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 clearer graphs in the free trade application soon but you know uh, I do track on simply Wall Street just to kind of get a bit more of a clearer picture but yeah that's a portfolio update sitting at 1287 9.91 um, sitting at about four and a half percent loss in the portfolio lost 750 pounds in the last couple of days um, but there has been some good performances which is which has you know given me a, a nice shelter in in the rain shall we say but hope you guys found this video useful and um, if you did please like please comment please subscribe please share the video to anyone that you think will benefit from this information you know the whole point of these videos is um, just to give you you know transparent information to educate through demonstrating and to show you guys you know what goes on week by week in the stock market just to kind of give you guys a flavor um, obviously do not consider any of my purchases advice I'm not advising you to buy any of these stocks I'm just kind of relaying to you what I've done and hopefully you know you can kind of take some of this information do your own research and find you know the best strategy the best stocks um, and the best you know way of investing for yourself so I hope you guys found this video useful if you did please smash that like button 
please subscribe to the channel and I will be back this week with a, quite a few more videos um, some general videos on you know the pound and a few other things as well I've got some more simply Wall Street journals talking about you know different aspects of the portfolio one specifically being dividend yield um, and quite a few others as well um, and obviously I'll be back next week with another portfolio update it's now going to be a weekly series it's going to be a weekly series so thank you to everyone that's been watching thank you to everyone that's subscribed to the channel thank you to everyone that's been supporting and I will catch you next time with another investment video happy investing peace